the amount that we invest in demonstrating sure. belief and encouragement, that's a really big factor. And that, that ties into this idea of growth mindset as well and grit. The more that people believe that it's not a, 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 an automatic assumption that just because I struggle initially, that that's a bad thing, right? Struggle is actually a good thing so long as it's within moderation. Too much struggle, obviously, is, is, is overwhelming. But the titles but a little hurt bit too. Of struggle. What's that? Sometimes the titles, the kids are like, oh, this one is doing this, but why can't I do it? Am I not smart enough? Uh -huh. So sometimes yeah, the they tend, can they hurt. Tend to, they tend to self-assess in that way. Yeah. That's why when we... That's why, uh, that's why Carol Dweck talks about not praising intelligence. She says praise effort. Because first of all, I mean, it, on a number of levels, first of all, intelligence I can't control for, right? It's a God-given concept. It's not something that you can say, oh, well, I'll just go into the store and buy a little more. And you know, that would be nice, right? You can buy some memory, so I can buy some intelligence. <laughs> You'd love that, right? It doesn't quite work that way. That's one reason that I would say. But what she says is different. She talks about that if you praise intelligence, it actually has a, 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 a negative um, outgrowth in the sense that a kid wants to remain intelligent so they won't take risks that make them feel that it would compromise their intelligence or compromise the way that they're perceived. Because they start to assess themselves socially and otherwise based off of the way that people view them. Who's the smart kid? Now it's again a side conversation, but I oftentimes tell teachers to think about well, how do we define smart? And this is a good practice for our kids also. Right? How many times did you have a, a, a classmate, 8th grade, 12th grade, in the yearbook, but most likely to succeed in that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. And then you look at them today, and maybe they're doing just fine, but they don't necessarily you know, knock it out of the ballpark. And then you've got people who are very pedestrian, you know, very average, maybe even the class clown, that all of a sudden they got into the real world, and they've become transformative. Right? We've heard all the stories of the Bill Gateses of the world who didn't even graduate whatever levels, and now they became you know, a corporate rock star, or who knows what, because maybe in school it didn't speak to them. It didn't give them that opportunity. And that's why another reason why differentiation I think is so important.